Rose, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today I bring to you the second part of my MB14 2018, that's lots of numbers, La Cup showcase. I thought it was LA Cup because of FA Cup I guess but it's not the same. If you missed part one you can click here right now to go and have a look at it but if not here's a little trailer. <laughs> It didn't even sound real. You know I love a big neck. Brickle plows. All right. Ooh, bloody hell. Wow. You hear how that had a long tail on it? And then it was like, Goof. he cut it off to start the loop. Really interesting effect. It's like ending the life of a fly. As many of you pointed out in the comments section of my part one analysis, he is not wearing headphones. So that means that there's no metronome. There's nothing to keep him in time apart from his own inner rhythm. <laughs> the notes he's hitting with this pluck sound go a little bit sharp but that is not a mistake most likely because if you've ever played a string instrument before do I have one? What? So I'm kidding. Hear how the note kind of bends. It's not like a pure sine wave you know that's what gives these instruments character is those slight pitch bends so that has got to be his secret of perfecting these sounds the way that he has he has made sure to replicate all of the characteristics of the instrument that he is embodying the way that he started to build this section with those pitched instrument sounds is a wonderful lesson in rhythm if that's what you want he starts on the beats and then he fills in the gaps in between, and then the gaps in between. Very even on the beat. We've got all these beats covered now. We don't actually need the drum loops anymore because the melody has taken over the rhythmic integrity. I couldn't remember the name of this instrument. It sounded like emu. Erhu. I think that's what he's doing. Not an emu. That would be unethical. So before we start to hypothesize about what is going on in here, let's look at his posture because that is a good old clue. He is here. And look what happens when we bring our chin down. Suddenly our voice gets stuck up high. This is why it's a terrible idea, by the way. A lot of people do this and it's erroneous. When they want to sing a low note, but what that actually does is it keeps your voice stuck. Side quest, if you do want to sing low notes, keep your jaw here. You see how my voice has got room to move down? Physics. So, he's trapped his voice up and then really kind of capitalized on this area. We've got lots of this kind of eh, 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 which is a twang sound. Twang is that little technique we could talk about a lot where the epiglottis covers the vocal folds to give you this kind of wah, 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 duck impression. There's some type of occlusion in the mouth. It's hard to tell if it's the tongue or the teeth or the lips because we can't see his mouth, which was very inconsiderate of him. He should have filmed it for me. Oh, that looks like a mermaid in his t-shirt. Whoa. But we can just play around with different tongue and teeth and lip positions. So this is our foundation voice quality. And then just play around at the front. Nice. 
climb over the mountains and sing under the moon. This gentle breeze on my face, listening to the chants of the waves. The sound of the wind in the branches reconnects me to the ancients and angels. What is there beyond these stars? Why does the moon have all these scars? The sea reflects her holy shines. What secrets do you hold inside? He sings with a lot of twang as well. And I'm sure that he could sing without twang if he wanted to, but because he's been using so much twang just now, making these string instruments of all different kinds of heights, because he did a very high one as well, like a thing. Twang is the position the voice has become accustomed to just now. When you keep your voice in the same kind of technique for a while, it will want to stay there. And you can test this if you start speaking with vocal fry, kind of like this for a long time. It will be very hard to speak without it. Twang is in a lot of our favourite voices, especially if you like belting. The chances are that belt has twang in it. Country music, for example, is a genre where you will immediately notice the twang. What is there beyond these stars? Why? Quite a lot of nasal resonance as well. They are not mutually exclusive, by the way. Twang and nasal resonance are two different things, but usually twang does have nasal resonance, so. Twang and nasal resonance are not mutually exclusive. do you hold inside? What is there beyond these stars? Oh, did he turn his mic down there to put that high harmony in? If he wants to make sure that his two voicey layers blend properly, he needs to get that second harmony out quieter. So he has three options. Sing the notes here, because when we sing in falsetto, it's quieter. But then that compromises the integrity and overall sound of the song. The second option would be to pull away from the mic. Again, not a good idea, because that would mean that the mic captures more of the environment and you could get someone sneeze in your loop. And so the final and best option is just to turn down the mic. Because this is live, he doesn't have the luxury of mixing it later, which is what we do in the studio. Wow, wow! What a bloody flex to sing for greatly different harmony parts in like four completely different areas of your voice like that. I keep on wondering on this road What is there beyond these stars? Why does the moon have all these stars? Whoa, I don't like the harmony there. He's gonna do another one, isn't he? good at the frequency spectrum. We had some high stuff earlier and then he took it out to start to build the strength and now the strength has been built to its maximum bigness in the low strength department so he's like time for some high frequencies and so this instrument is kind of nondescript it's just like a beautiful angelic wail and notice how when he goes up to the highest notes with this instrument, he uses the E vowel. The For a very good reason. I'm gonna get very nerdy with you for just a second. 
So this here, my fairy folk, is a frequency analyzer and it's gonna show you what happens in terms of frequency when we do the exact same note, but we change the vowel. I... This is the coolest thing ever. This is the science as to why E feels easier to sing because a lot of the weight is taken out of the middle. So that means that we can sing higher with more resonance and fullness. We keep the stuff on the top, that high frequency as you can see here, but we don't have any chunkiness in the middle. It works, bitches. <laughs> So I know what you're thinking. That was higher and it was R, uh, what the? It was R uh, and it was higher, but it was in a different register. <laughs> Only a small portion of the vocal folds close. <laughs> so you can hear that little transition where they go from a little portion to close. It's different. And that is just because of the different function in here. Oh, it was a wall. I'm gonna hydrate with you again. Oh, they're doing wolf noises in solidarity. I love the way he filled that up from like the outside in. We started low. Mm -hmm. Like bottom, top, down. Like a backflip. Oh my god, just so freaking clean! The drum sounds themselves are immaculate. I may, or I may not, have been taking lessons recently with a very famous beatboxer, which I may or may not have recorded for you to watch here on the channel. And this hypothetical beatboxer in question may or may not <laughs> have told me, he did, that it's really important to build your drum kit. Build your snares, build your kicks, build your hi-hats, and just have all of these instruments go over them repetitively so that the quality of those sounds are so clean and so like those specific drum components. You don't need infinite drum sounds. It's just important that you have some kind of full kit that you've worked on and you isolate those sounds and over and over and over again so they all sound the same. That's what makes you sound like a drum kit. I read a quote actually this morning that said something like, work hard in the dark to be seen in the light. All of these people that we look up to, whether it be athletes, musicians, artists, whatever, they have to do so much that nobody sees. So just remember that. We shouldn't go around saying these people are superhuman too much. I'm guilty of it because I'm so in awe. But 
this doesn't just sort of fall out, you know? He's done a lot in the dark. <laughs> This world of calamity, dirty looks and grudges and jealousy. And police, they abuse them authority. Media cows, we don't know about variety. Uh, we gotta keep on walking on the road. Just a reminder in case you've forgotten, this is not a backing track, he just recorded all these parts live. I just, I know we know this, but just want you to keep that in the forefront of your mind because it's so clean and so perfect that it is easy to forget. Okay, we may continue. That's a very, very subtle inflection, but it is a cool thing to do. And it's not too difficult. All you need to do as a drill is this. Ah, and then go over your speed bump on the onset of that note. On the road. You'll have the speed bump effect in here after a couple of practices. I will call it the speed bump. When they're led, oh, it's a big old speed bump. It's one of those horrible ones that you get in central London. <laughs> Are you having trouble with the new speed bump? To make sure that you will not, under any circumstance, breach the 20 mile an hour limit, which you can't anyway, because there's always so much traffic, which you can't anyway, because the congestion charge is so expensive. Yeah. We gotta keep on walking on the road to Zion. Oh. John will be waiting there, Zion. John will be waiting there. We gotta keep it burning on the road to Zion. John will be waiting there, Zion. John will be waiting there. So cool, this call and response chanty effect. Because it's so short, there's no big tail or vibrato at the end. That's what makes it sound like a group. Chant. So he's like doing the lead part in between. Oh. So there's a lot of contrast. We gotta keep it burning on the road to Zion. All of that musical genius plus a political message. What an all round She's drunk. We can kind of start to see a formula emerging for his- You wanna stay down there? Okay formula emerging for his arranging. The way that he starts with all the low atmospheric stuff and then we have a little high sound come in, then it cuts out, he does the main bulk of it, the singing, then a high sound comes back in, grand finale, crowd goes wild. The arranging skills are a very significant part of this. The songs, they all present different themes and allude to different genres and they're so engaging as musical works by themselves even if it wasn't someone producing this entirely live in front of your very eyes with their mouth. The composition and arranging value is so high and I would really recommend that for anyone that wants to develop as an artist whether it be a beatboxer or songwriter or vocalist. So think about how you're arranging it. Don't give them everything straight away and don't give them nothing at all. Make sure that you take the person that listens to you on an emotional roller coaster. Give them things, take them away, give them back, take them away again. He made a much deeper impression on me than just being in awe of his skills. I got to learn about what he values and the kind of music that he's inspired by and his influences. He's just got such a strong identity as an artist. And I think this is what separates the vocal athletes with the superstars. Someone that represents a 
magical idea that we can look up to and be inspired by it and their light shines on us. We can all be stars. As long as we focus on doing what we enjoy, doing it a lot, and being authentic, and then choosing to share it graciously with other people. It is almost time to love you and leave you until the next video. But we cannot end a video here without reading out today's oracle card. The snail of suffering. <laughs> it's okay to admit you are struggling. It's not okay to suffer in silence. Reach out. We love you and we want to help. Don't be a d you are not a burden. That is definitely part of the process of stepping into your star suit. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. If there are any singers or beatboxers or any voice users of any kind you would like to see me analyze, please let me know down below in the comments as it would be my pleasure. If you like, you can also join us on Patreon where you will be able to decide exactly the kind of content that you see here every week. I love you very much and I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Mwah! Bye. Oh, don't leave without your hug. Okay, you can go. Bye! <laughs> Woo! It's a mic on. Yeah, it is. This is the part where the magic happens. Because we don't have that... <laughs> Some of you might. <laughs> because we can see before our very eyes and ears that we can also hear one very handsome package. It sounded weird.